Hey, and welcome to Choose Your Own Path. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you what I do when it comes up to coating my sticks. This is the final step of it. What I'm using is a pour-on. It's, uh, it's a high-gloss finish. Um, I use it for all of my carvings. As you can see, that's basically coating everything uh, that I use. What this does is it seals in uh, for anything, like moisture and stuff like that. What will happen is it'll harden to like rock solid, um, as it did with my motorcycle cane here. It's definitely solid, and it's not going to break, which is a bonus. What it is is uh, you have your resin and your hardener, and all I do is I take two measuring cups that I have, two little cups that I have, and I just pour it in here and. Uh, yeah, we'll get at it right now. So we'll do this pretty, not quick, but quick enough. I usually put about 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters of, uh, of both, of resin and of the hardener. So they have to be measured pretty much exact. I mean, if you're off by, if you're off by a smidge, yeah, what are you going to do, right? So, <clears throat> now there's, different people will tell you different things that you pour your hardener first, then your resiner. You know what, to me, it really don't matter, but you want to make sure you get it all in. So, what I do is, I just pour the first one in, using a clean stick, to always stir, you don't want no... You just don't want no little bits or nothing inside your your resin or in in your your finished product because it will show up. This once this stuff hardens up, it's solid rock. It's well, well you know you know what I mean, solid rock, but um, it hardens up. And then I'll pour the hardener in. Like I, I say, it, I don't think it makes a difference which one you pour in first. Um, what I tend not to do is pour them both in the same measuring cup. <clears throat> and that makes a difference. Um, I just think that with these cups that I'm using, that were given to me, they basically have a wider top and a bottom. I don't know if, like the measurement should be precise. Why take that chance, right? So now that I got them both in, the biggest and the most important spot, uh, step is the mixing. What you want to get is uh, a, like a milky, a white milky kind of a, a flow to your resin. Just like mixing any other kind of resin that you have, I just find this stuff works really good and uh, it's very affordable. If, you, if you're going to Michael's, Michael's in Canada, that is, I don't know if there's anywhere else. Um, and they got coupons. Yay! You get 50% off. A $60 bottle goes down to $30. Or 60 bucks for two bottles goes to $30. And uh, you could do quite a bit with this. Even at, well, it's 10 millimeters of both. Uh, which gives you 20 millimeters of mixture. As you can... As you can see, I guess I can see it. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of yellow. But anyway, uh, it gives quite a bit. Now, again, if it's not enough, we just mix more. But I'm pretty sure this, this should work. I could have made a little bit more, I guess. But So what I have is a really milky mixture in there right now. Um, uh, one thing is humidity. Humidity... Or cold is not a good time to use this stuff it's actually very nice in my shop today so that will work so all I'm using today is a sponge brush which I always use and I just get the rest off the stick sometimes it could use up to two coats not always but sometimes um, what I'll do first of all is I'll start off by taking it down. Important to know is always have 
your items clean. That is so important. If they're not clean, all you need to do is take a brush, or a, not brush, sorry, a, a rag, and wipe it down. And you could already see the difference between how it coats on. And when this hardens, it'll, it'll look amazing. That's, that's what I love about putting this stuff on. It also brings out a shine. Not everybody likes shine, you know, uh, but I find that with my crafts, my hobby, um, I like to keep my things preserved for a long, long time. And this is definitely, definitely the way to do it. So it's just a quick coat. Now, another thing too is when adding this, this kind of stuff, um, it depends on the temperature again. It could end up leaking down, which it'll just, for some reason, it just wants to follow the stick downwards, I guess gravity, right, we're going to say. And, uh, yeah, you will sometimes get big splots at the bottom that you have to keep an eye on. One of the big things that I do is after I'm done coating my sticks, um, I will just use the tip to just kind of brush it down slowly and get it, get all the, the access, the excess off, access, the excess off. Now, if you're wiping it down properly, and it just needs a little coat, but like I said, that was a broken one, isn't it? Like I said, it can turn out that uh, it can uh, leak, or you could end up having or wanting to put two coats of this stuff on. Not everybody uses this. One of the big benefits of using uh, the pour on is it will last a lot longer. Generally, will not break. Um, definitely will seal it. Uh, sometimes people use, and I'm saying people because I've seen it, uh, they'll use um, green wood, not knowing that it's, you know, definitely not, not cured, ready, and so on and so forth. So as I'm doing this, now I'm going to hang it back up. So this way I can get get it better. Again, I forgot my gloves. Not very smart. And my stick broke, but that's okay. I won't touch it. I, I will not touch the the actual uh, staining of it. So just going up by going up and down, trying to hit every little spot. You'll get the effect of it, turning it really solid, making the colors pop out. Very important. You want it to look good. You want it to look absolutely good. And keep on, keep on going. I should use a better brush than this. Give me one second. Sometimes you have to use a brand new one. Now I'm seeing that I may not have enough for two, or I may, it all depends on how thick I'm gonna add um, the pour on to. The one thing I'd like to do is get a lot inside of this piece here, inside where the snake's uh, more of his belly or slash his stomach is. Um, I explained in the last video I had a little issue with a, a rot pocket in there which ended up causing me to dig a little deeper than I wanted to but still very light and I think it looks great you know. Snakes are not for everybody. I've, I've had many people ask me why snakes? Well again like I mentioned in my last video um, Mike Stinnett really inspired me to, to do something different and to watch. And there's many, there's many people now that are doing this on, um, on our videos, 
on in our groups. We have a group called uh, Walking Stick Makers, um, based out on a it's a, a U.S. friend uh, made it or is part of it, and it's absolutely amazing. A lot of members, a lot of great information. Um, you can always look on on Facebook. Great group, lots of, and, and I'm gonna say it again, like I always do. Lots of very talented people on our groups. It don't matter where you're from, uh, beginner, novice, you know, professional, whatever you want to call yourselves. Art is art. Art is always beautiful, no matter what. You know, and you old saying there. You know, not everybody likes you, but your mother likes you <laughs> the most. <laughs> so. Everybody is, is awesome in my eyes when it comes up to doing art. No good or bad. So again, this won't do two, two sticks. It will only do the one, which is fine. If I get two to do the one. It dries fairly fast, so you have to be pretty quick at wiping down and getting all the spots, plus um, it healing or curing I should say inside of the bowl so you have to make sure that your your cup is ready to go for the next batch if you want to do it right away and vice versa you just have to make sure you're you're good to go always be always be prepared they say with this one I wasn't thinking that I should have made more but you know what it will work I'll just get to the next step which is the other snake stick um been doing a little bit of research on more of the wood that we're gonna i'm gonna be using in my videos um i don't mind pine very soft wood some people are are for it some people are against it um hardwoods are very no, I'm not. I'm never going to say difficult to work with. Nothing's difficult to work with. It's the tools you have, the knowledge you ha you also have of um, into using them, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to be trying to use a little bit something different. Maybe some um, some oak when I when I get my hands on some. <laughs> I do have a little couple of pieces that are drying that I'd like to experiment with. Now, when I say experiment, it's because it would be it would be just as new to me as as anything. Uh, I'm not always not I'm, I'm not a I'm not a wood wood doctor or wood specialist. I don't know exactly every types of wood that I use. I've had many questions about that. Oh, what kind of wood do you use? I have no idea. I just use what's there. As long as it's solid and it's not too rotten. It will work. Just getting to the end. Um, again, safety-wise, this stuff is a chemical. Getting it on your skin is not the best for you. Uh, you should always wear gloves. I always say that, but I never seem to wear them. And uh, a mask is very important, but I have my door open here, so meaning that. Um, I am breathing a lot of fresh air and I'm trying not to get too close to the not too close to the wood itself or to the, the stain. I always say practice what you preach and sometimes I just I forget. Or I just not not on the ball since I'm making videos faster. I'm trying to make some videos to get out there for everybody to see. Okay, so I think I got most of it covered with this one uh, yes I'll definitely be putting a second coat on this stick um, just because it has a lot of areas to cover and then go from there so just as I'm doing that I'm gonna get another couple of cups out and I am going to do the other one. This one's a little bit, well, I think they're both the same length. So I'm not too...
concerned about adding more but I should have at least maybe maybe I'll add 15 to each one of them so find the pour line add 15 ah, there we go and just always remember when we're using these things wipe the bottle um, this stuff when it it hardens it's just it's horrible it just hardens you ruin your bottles after I had one that I couldn't even literally close it or basically close it I had more problems closing it every time so this application will last for a long time meaning that like these bottles are I just opened them like this is like the third pour with them which works perfectly and it lasts quite a bit of, of uh, use so that's what we want we want to keep it you know every everybody wants to everybody wants to have a good amount of stuff you always have to have enough supply on hand when you're doing stuff too I, I would say like you know you don't want to have half a bottle and then go through and go oh crap now I got a little story get some more well guess what you won't have time for that so always remember to have lots of stuff and like I said when this stuff goes on sale at at uh, Michael's uh, you know at your normal $60 a bottle and if you can use the Michael's coupons for 50% off well you're laughing that's the best of it okay so we're almost done here on this one now curing time with this um, it all depends on the box I know it says up to 20 to 24 to 48 hours depending on you know where it is um, if I was to do this during the day like right now it's like six o'clock if I was to do this during the day I'd be able to um, have the doors open and you know three four hours It'll still be tacky, but it'll it'll be it'll be there. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, it is 24 hours, if not longer. Copy. So it is longer. Um, it all depends. I do all my my wood staining and everything outside. I don't. I'm never gonna do it inside. So everything's outside, which is the way to do it. You gotta have air. You have to. It's, it's gotta be able to breathe. Of bubbles so you've got to be very very careful with that plus you know if you have pets kids whatever allergies not a good thing to do this stuff inside anyway it always just it helps to do it outside well vented area so now I'm just gonna get rid of that all right here we go again now we're gonna cover let me start with the other stick and again, same process, I just let it put it on, try to cover everything you can. The tail here for the, for the rattlesnake has to be kind of watched when you're doing it because you're going to miss the insides. Um, and like I said, this stuff wants to go with gravity, so what it's going to do is it's going to want to travel if you put it too thick somewhere and then then you're going to have a big glob of whatever of this all over and once this hardens it's solid as a rock you know there's i mean you could sand it i'm sure you can i haven't had to but it becomes really really hard they use a lot of this stuff is used on tables when they're making their epoxy tables I've seen a lot of great videos on river tables, they call them now, uh, which I want to try one time. That'd be awesome. Um, you know, any kind of filling in or, or stuff like this. Like I said, this stuff, it it's very hard. It's solid. So it makes beautiful tables when put on properly. There's a couple of web or YouTube sites that I've been watching that... Uh, they've been doing it. I don't know if offhand means because I don't 
always follow everybody. Too busy to be watching other people's stuff too, I guess. Um, but I do contribute to liking and sharing on Facebook, and I hope everybody else can do that too. It'd be awesome. The more likes, the better. The more people that watch, the better. Any questions about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, if I'm doing it wrong, you know what? Don't be shy. Give her. I can't hurt you from here. I don't bite. Oops. Um, yeah. And then I'm just going to keep on going here. The thing about, the only thing I don't like about these brushes I'm using, that's one of the biggest things, is they break very easy. They, they tend to, um, once they get full of this epoxy, they tend to break. So you have to be careful. And I guess just in general, you should have more than one on hand. Like I said, just like everything else. So since I broke that last one, and this one's being worn out, I will switch it for another. And unfortunately, it's my last one, but that's okay. You can use any kind of brush. Like, honestly, you can use anything you want. As long as the bristles don't come off on it, uh, I think that's okay. Well, I know that's okay. Um, you definitely don't want some with bristles because then you're going to be you're gonna be mad. You're going to be trying to peel off all the, all, this, all the excess stuff, all the bristles and everything. And, well, let me tell you, it's, I've done it. It's not fun. Okay. So, I'm just gonna add some light here, so it's better. Not very fun or interesting, but I'm just showing you the process of what I do to cover uh, my sticks and this is it's very important <clears throat> excuse me very important to me that I do this because like I said it it, it ensures me that it'll last a lot longer and it really makes it stand out just like anything else seeing stuff in person you can go wow that looks great you know on video yeah it looks good you know, definitely want to come and see it in person if you if you wanted one, or if you're interested in in knowing how to make one. Um, it's not not too difficult if you have the right tools. One of the tools that I I think I've mentioned this in another video that I will be investing in very soon uh, is the Arbitech Mini Grinder. Now that would make that would make my life a lot easier. First of all, um, a lot faster because then we can get things moving a lot faster. This is always the hard part: is getting the last, the last bit of it. But we'll get her done. And I think we're almost finished. I might start trying, now I've never done paracord, I've, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not anywhere near knowing how to do that. Um, I've watched a couple of videos, uh, many videos, a lot of people say it's not as hard as it looks, other people, you know, tend to say, well, you really gotta know what you're doing, because it could look like crap, so on and so forth. I tend to learn everything on my own, so I will be trying trying some. Or maybe another good idea would be uh, leather. Having a leather wrap around the handles would be nice. I'm not sure yet. I sure would like to learn how to do some of that stuff and uh, see how, how it looks. I think that's important. Now, okay, so I just gotta, the thing too is when you're doing this, 
trying to make sure you have proper lighting um, just so that you could see like here the brush is leaving a little bit of fuzz uh, like I said once it's on once it dries you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to get it off it does do, it will come off don't I'm not gonna say it's not it will come off but it's a heck of a time so you know good lighting you can see everything and go from there And I think you yeah, gotta make sure you get all the, the the low parts is my most concern because the like I said the gravity will pull it down because this is thick and you'll end up having a big ball by the face and you'll have to try to cut that off somehow. Pain in the butt. Happen. So, like I said, what I tend to do is I let it sit for, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And then I'll just go by and wipe it down again with the same brush. Make sure you pull out all the stuff you don't want on your hair and bring it down. I think that's what I want with this. And getting in these in the tail is important, like I said. Around the tail. The mini grinder I was talking about that, that is an amazing tool. If anybody ever sees videos out, you know, make let me a little comment on there and see if you ever watch it. Let me know what you think of them. I just think they're it's an amazing it's an amazing tool because it's got it's got lots of power. It's uh it's definitely a, a tool to, to cut into. Um, Arbor, Arbor Tech makes a very sturdy tools. I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was looking at the King Arthur um, lineup of tools. I wasn't too impressed by, well, maybe it's just because of the videos I've been watching. I wasn't too impressed on the tooling. Now, don't get me wrong, there's gonna be people who's gonna say, oh, no, no, I, I have one and they're great and they, they work awesome. They, you know what? Saying that I'm not impressed is 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 a stupid thing for me to do because I've never used one, um, and until I can get my hands on something, that would be awesome. Like it'd be it'd be neat to be able to um, maybe test some tools one time. You know, maybe somebody knows someone that you know they want they want some crazy Canadian to to test out their tooling. Let me know. Hit me up. I'll, uh, you send it to me, I'll, I'll give it a rating, I'll, I'll make a video of it, no problems with that, um, anything, anybody has a tool that they want me to try out, again, same thing, send it to me, just hit me up on, uh, Facebook, or leave a comment, and, uh, and we can get a hold of each other, and I will definitely have the time to test it out, and I will give you my honest opinion on what I think, and how it works how it performs it'd be nice to have different kind of tools to work at like I'm not looking for freebies I don't want that what I want to do is to put out my personal opinion on any kind of tool that's out there that I could use again just as you know always the same kind of reminder I use power tools I'm not a carver by hand anymore I use 99% power tools, so any kind of bits that go on a Fordham, uh, you know, the Arbitex series, I would love to get a hold of those guys and have, maybe have them, or see if they would do that, see if they would send me out a tool to try. Um, you know, they always love testers, right? Who doesn't like somebody who can test stuff for it? Unfortunately, not the not every tool, you know, they're, 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 they're expensive, right? We gotta give them that. I mean, oh, 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 too much. They're very expensive, and I get, you know, nobody's gonna give you nothing for free. That's that's the one major thing that always goes on. Nobody wants, nobody. It's not that they don't want. Nobody can. It's yeah, they gotta make their money too. But like I said, I would do 
all, all my own views on how the tool works, uh, safety, uh, just performance. Performance is a big thing. How it works with, you know, Canadian wood, how it works with, you know, like the, the way it's, it, it works, just the way it works, period. I shouldn't say any more than that. That's, that's pretty much it. So getting back to this, one of the things I said is the rot pocket inside of the snake here, or inside of the stick, with the epoxy, it'll harden it up and it'll have no problem. The problem with doing that is that, um, have, which way can it be, you know, placed in there without, without it leaking out all the time. Um, that would be the hardest part because now it's gonna definitely I put some in there and I know it's gonna leak out but to a certain point okay I noticed that it doesn't take off any of the paint it basically it leaves a, a pretty clean line but it's just like anything else if you're painting if you're painting and you're doing you know, all crooked lines or whatever, on anything, that's what you're gonna get. It's gonna dry the way you put it on. That's a definite, that's a guarantee. So if you put it on like a big blob, that's what you're gonna get. Now, if you're happy with that, there, good for you. I wouldn't be. So, and that's one of the, probably the main reasons why I'm always constantly trying to brush it downwards. You know, get it to a certain point. Keeping an eye on, keep an eye on, eye on the low spots, which is probably right now would be the top of the, cane, uh, the walking stick, and uh, getting getting all that stuff off so it just just doesn't blob up. I talk a lot, don't I? I'm French. That's okay. Boring just to watch people making videos. They just all they do is work and they never say anything. Do I talk to myself a lot? No. But do I talk to, onto the videos a lot? Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much. I'm gonna call that covered. I wish I can get back in here a bit more, but I can't. You can see I'm using. I'm using a stick to hold it because I definitely don't want to get full of resin any more than I have on my fingers. And again, like I said, if this guy needs another coat of resin, I will definitely, definitely put one on. That would work. All right, so now it's just gonna dry. That's all I can do. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'd love to have you guys always watching my videos. Um, comments. Make comments. I, yeah, say something. I don't care what it is. Say hello. Say goodbye. Say you you suck. I don't care. Just say something. It's always good to see read other people's comments. Um, questions, answering, whatever. Go for it. And uh, don't forget, I'm on Facebook. Just look for my name, Richard Vorio. You can type that up and you'll see our, my group. Or add me as a friend and then... We could add you into the groups if you're interested. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.